Hi and welcome to episode 5 of the Make It Mastermind podcast. This week we're interviewing Scott Mears, the entrepreneur, business owner and event marketer from Leeds. So uh, we're back, episode 5 of the Make It Mastermind podcast. This week we've got Scott Mears joining us on the show. Scott, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, let's kick off, Scott, for the people that's not heard about you before. Give us a bit bit of an introduction about yourself, what you do, mm-hmm. um, and then we'll pick away your brain uh, as we go <laughs> yeah, along, if that's all right. It. I like it. Okay, brief introduction to me. Um, so what I, did, I graduated last year from Manchester Metropolitan University of Manchester, so I spent the last five years in Manchester. Um, and that's where I did business management. I've done business since school. That's the one thing that I really enjoyed was business. So I went into business for that. I went into, into college and did a BTEC in business. And then I went and did business again um, in, uh, in university. And that was largely influenced by my father uh, being running and managing a lot of beauty businesses. Mm-hmm. So that's where I, that's why, why I've grown into what I do now is it's just, I've always been business focused. Okay. Um, and that's what I've created today where I found my passion through doing a placement at university. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I did a, I ran a student beauty company and that's where I fell in love with social media. Okay. And that's what I do now is I run a social media company, um, specifically for events. Um, so I pay, basically put in bums in seats to events, uh, okay. specifically networking and business events at the moment. Um, but I would look to other events as well. So that's my main aim at the moment. Um, and I'm combining that with mental health a lot now at the moment as well, doing a lot of stuff on mental health as well, combining that with my uh, with my company as well. That's okay. my main focus. So how long has your company been going for then? Uh, since November, it was founded in November last year. November last year? Yeah. Okay, and how has it been so far stepping into after uni, coming straight into the work life, I'm guessing you're working for yourself now, yep. as opposed to working for anyone else, how have you yeah. found that? It, it, yeah, it was, so it, it first happened in my placement, so it, the transition after graduating was, it was okay, okay, because the first time I worked for myself was in my placement, um, I worked for a beauty company um, for a little bit, but then the project basically became a full company, a full startup, mm-hmm. and they put money behind it and time and effort, and I ended up taking over that, so that, that was the scary process at that, that time because it was there. I never run a business, never even set up a website, never done anything like right. that. That was a scary process. Mm-hmm. Whereas after graduating, it was okay because I'd been through that process already. Mm-hmm. Um, so initially doing it f- at, f- at first, it was not comfortable. I didn't want to pick up a phone to anyone. I didn't want to do the sales. I didn't want to talk. I was just it was yeah. completely out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so with that, I guess you would have had to, I guess, sell yourself a lot and yeah. Self, self-growth self would have been quite big. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah, like get some good habits going and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Is that is there anything you've struggled to get into? Is it like, do you have a routine? Are you quite rigid with how you go about it, the, the business? Or are you quite freestyle? It, it's funny you say that because I think having a routine is really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I'm not, <laughs> don't always have it. Like, yeah, I don't yeah, always keep honest. to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, it's one thing I struggle with is, continuous discipline um to because when you work for yourself uh if no one's there to get you up no one's there to yeah. say you yeah to you can that take extra. a you can take a cheeky day off if you exactly you've got to clear it with yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah i get that and that's yeah so i i struggle with that from time to time with just the discipline even when i have the love for the business it, it's still there's times where i just like i'd rather just stay in bed for yeah. an extra hour mm-hmm. um but habits um I, I don't know, some habits that I've done is just forcefully get up at a certain time every day. Right. Um, Can so, I ask what time you get up? It tends to be quite a big one yeah, for everyone. Like, it's, it's like yeah. a massive thing now. Everyone's trying to get up earlier and earlier. Yeah. And I, the, it's like a competition. At the it, <laughs> and that's the thing. See, I argued with myself as well because I was like, oh, if you want to uh, be a millionaire, you have to be up at five yeah. in the morning, four in the morning. It's like, I can't do yeah. it. I can't do it. Like, I just... And I thought I had to be like that. And I tried, yeah. and I was just like, this is horrible. There is it's, a perception that, yeah, you, yeah, if you're just up at a normal time, you, you're slacking up yeah. two hours longer than you. Yeah. All right, if, well, if you're functioning, yeah, that's cool. But if you're not, then, you know, what's the point? If you're that's not going to be thing. productive and you're just going to be like a slug for the first two hours, there's no point, is there? It's just, that's it, it's finding what works. Being honest you. with yourself, yeah, yeah, you're right. 
It's fine, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. So with the startup only just starting last year, yeah. um, been going, what's that, seven months now? Yeah, roughly. Or roughly around that. Yeah. What do you see the business being? What Do you have a vision into where you want to carry it? Um, yeah. I've seen on the side you've got a YouTube page where you're doing a lot of self-growth, mm-hmm. kind of similar to the mastermind things that we're doing with mm. teaching people what you failed from. and you, you Yeah, know. like being open. Because that's rare. Like We don't see it. We'll get onto the social media stuff because we do want to talk to you a lot about that. Yeah. But um, do you see... like? People are not that honest on social media. No. Do you see it? <laughs> so there's two sides to it. So I would say, like, I work in sales. And so if I, because you're the main face of your business, do you see it as a as a good thing? Or do you think it could be perceived as a bad thing to be open and honest about mistakes you've made within business? Because if I was selling a product, which in yeah. the way you are the yeah. product, I wouldn't highlight the, the bad sides of that. Mm. But then, so do you see the... Do you, do you think people appreciate the honesty? That's what I'm kind of getting at. Yeah, I think because personal brand is such a big thing at the moment, and especially with what I do, it, mm-hmm. like I don't even have a logo. Like I am, like that is how I yeah, yeah. built clients. Is just purely meeting them, getting to know them. It's just me. Yeah, like, yeah, building a, rapport. The brand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and I find that's really important. And that I like with my YouTube channel, I don't shy away from things. If I'm annoyed, you'll know about it. Uh-huh. Or if I'm upset, okay. you'll know about it. And at first, I did not feel comfortable doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, like yesterday, I did my first ever talk on opening up by uh, mental health okay. um, and my experiences with it. And that was an intimidating process. But I wanted to be more open because mm-hmm. it, it just allows people, I think, to genuinely believe in what you're doing, mm-hmm. that you're willing to put yourself a little bit vulnerable. And mm. it allows people to really like buy into you yeah. um, rather than this. Because no one buys into that sort of fake lifestyle. And that. Well, they, they like it, like, oh, that, but it's just so fake. It's like, whereas, oh, yeah, have you seen that? But it's not. There's yeah. no real attachment there. It's just like, I want to be like that. Whereas if you create an emotional attachment that someone can actually relate to, which is the pain, people mm-hmm. can relate to that. Yeah. Not many people will share it. And so I think it's really important. But I can appreciate times where you have to be a little smart of it is if it's mm. going to cause an issue of a client mm-hmm. yes yeah that's, I that's would, what i'm yeah that's what i I'm would probably. recommend yeah. to think it through at times and i have had mm. to do that sometimes yeah yeah that's the biggest thing with the with the podcast is um it's very easy to get carried away when you're talking like, yeah so easy and like i enjoy it and i like to have a laugh and a joke and then I also have to realise that, you know, I'm still working and, you know, yeah, as well, like personal yeah. brand, especially in sales, like, uh, keep going on about sales, but it's just a relative topic because it's quite broad, but your personal brand in sales is important because I think once that, so. especially in a certain industry and, like, once that goes, you absolutely, mm. like, you're pretty much screwed, to be honest. Like, if you're not trustworthy or just, you just got a bad rep for whatever yeah, reason, it's, it's really going to stick with you. So, yeah, you're right, and... Uh, at least you're open and honest, so that's yeah. A, that is a nice thing. It's mm-hmm. rare as well. Because they're, anyway. they're never buying the product; they're always buying you. Yeah, that's essentially, why like should, they're always buying into you. Yeah, as long as the, yeah. the business is semi decent, mm-hmm. you know, you've got a good a good backup. But you're your backup, so as long as you trust yourself, yeah, <laughs> then the, you're, you're golden. Because mm. <laughs> that's one of the hard things, like in I, well, like business say, sales, like relying on other people. It's hard because you have to trust other people within a business or whatever but mm-hmm. as long as you know like your drawbacks or you but it's being truthful with yourself yeah i lie to myself sometimes it's, I, well that's it sometimes we, i think we can lie to ourselves yeah. about even knowing it and yeah yeah, yeah. You yeah. how did you find the, the, the transition of being completely open and like you say speaking your mind yeah. on your youtube channel was that quite hard to do that at first really tough yeah really uncomfortable it, it was just what was the worry? What was the main? It just that you um, offend people. No, I think it was just unveiling too much, and you just the mind just plays so many weird scenarios. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And it's just you envisage what people are going to think of you, and they're going to think less of you. They're going to think you're not doing good because when you start a business, you feel like everyone's like, "Oh my god, he started a business! Like mm. he's so cool. He's so..." And then suddenly they see that like, something's going wrong. Like, "Oh my god, he's how embarrassing he's going on." Like this, like you guys will know, like how hard it is running business. Things go wrong, yeah. And to then show that to your friends, it's they like, oh my, they love it. Like they're just like, oh my god, like 
is, is, is not working out for him and it's just, it, it was tough to yeah. p- project that because then it's like oh I failed it's, it's, so that was tough mm. for sure well you say fail but I also think it's for people outside of that world who doesn't have their own bull who are mm. not trying to create something and put something out there it's really hard to relate to I think mm. understanding the business and putting the time in the business and if things don't go wrong you might like with with our own business that we're working on the side of Make It Masterminds. We've had quite a few hiccups along the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah but yeah. we don't see them as well. I don't anyway. I don't see them as hiccups. Mm, I see them yeah. as learning. Yeah, learning yeah. Curve. Absolutely, absolutely. Whereas you say a lot of outside influence might see that as a, as a big loss that yeah. you've taken. So yeah, being able it's a different to different yeah. mindset. That's why you are where you are. That's but yeah, that's yeah. As long as you start seeing, you have to have that that kind of tunnel vision. I think. Like I, I said it on the last. One of our last interviews, like you have to, you do have to be in it for yourself, but not in the selfish terms, but in like a, you know, you have to be focused on your own goals and mm. your own like view of things. Yeah. Because otherwise you will worry too much about what people think and that's mm. where you'll get swayed from what you really want to do. And then that's when you might look back in two years and be like, oh, I've not really gone in the right direction of what mm. I wanted to mm. do with the business because of what people have said to me mm. previously or like comments and all that stuff. You have to have a, like a rigid approach to sometimes yeah, so like can... people's views on, I don't know. It'd like be seen as stuff. quite ruthless sometimes. Like you're just yeah. straight, but if you understand mindset, it makes sense with, yeah. you see that goal, you have mm. to go a hundred miles an hour rather than wasting time mm-hmm. with all the emotion. Um, yeah. All right. So we talked a little bit about, well, you mentioned about mental health and about opening mm-hmm. up and stuff like that. And since I've started reading a lot more, I've found myself being much more interested in like how the brain works, mm-hmm. like so much. Mm-hmm. Like it's just been by accident. Okay. But because we were chatting about, me and Julian were talking about like there's two types of intelligence. There's like you know they say like book smart, street smart, but. Yeah. In really like emotional intelligence and like intellectual, you know, yeah. like IQ, mm-hmm. IQ, EQ. Yeah. So I just started picking up books about it and all that stuff. And then the book went into more detail on like, uh, like how different everyone is, like how about mm. your mind will trigger certain things. And that's how people yeah. react in a certain way to certain scenarios. And it's been something now that I've just wanted to keep learning about because mm. Before I was like, oh, you can just like probably how most people was like, oh, you can, you can, oh, you should just be able to get over it. Like if you, yeah. if you, if you've got a strong enough will, you can yeah, just, you can just hack it. And that, yeah. So now I started. Not I've not really been consciously researching it, but I've like stumbled across it and like proper interested me. So I just wondered like if you can give us a an insight on like around business mm. and linking it with social media, like how much of a an issue it can be or it could be and like how people could manage it. Like, cause we talked about social media on the last podcast yeah. with Tony and we understand that is people can get, if you're scrolling through your phone and you're like, Oh, this guy's got a Ferrari, this guy's got a Patek, mm. this guy's got a Rolex and you just be like, Oh, I don't have a Rolex. And then it's like that yeah. vicious spiral of, ah, oh, like wants and have nots and yeah. like self pity and all that sort of stuff. But then it obviously like it's, I'm probably talking a bit too much now, but <laughs> the question like is like within business, mm. mental health just gets like pushed to the side. Yeah. Like it's always about like be you got to be super driven yeah. and like super corporate it's a and, lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like the so to go into it, social media, it's important for your business, obviously. Mm-hmm. What are the pros and cons to social media? Like from a personal brand side, is there a when it in, in yeah with mental health. with relation to it yeah. yeah um so this is something i'm doing a lot more of um so i had my own experience with it um which i did talk on yesterday the first time i did that um and that until re- literally this month mm-hmm. i've not brought it into my company um even though i've had experience with it um so it's weird because so i'm like I've OCD have been 
perfect. And I know if I tell anyone with starting business, don't try to be a perfectionist. It's mm-hmm. just get it out, throw it away uh-huh. because it's just, it'll send you insane. Yeah. Um, but I just can't get away from it. <laughs> like no. I've calmed it down. I know how to manage it, but it, there are still times where I will just spend a silly amount of time on just one post, okay. which will mean nothing. It might get one like, it might mean nothing, uh, but it's just, okay. but it's that OCD nature. But what in a conversation I had yesterday is that he was like, why are you doing social media then? If you have that, I said, the thing is, is whatever I do, it's still going to be there. I will still think like that, mm-hmm. even if I do something else. So it won't change. Mm. So I like social media and that's going to happen. And I've found ways to manage it. Yeah. So does it help my mental health or mental health? It doesn't, doesn't I love social media, um, but there are times that it doesn't. Um, like, for instance, getting up in the morning, I don't go to some of my social media anymore. So that was a really becoming, like you mentioned about the brain, I really started to analyze what I did in the morning. Mm-hmm. And whenever I um, looked at emails or negative things, it really messed my feelings up for the day. Like I okay. really started to recognize it. Mm-hmm. So now I don't do that. I don't go to, for the first hour of the day, I don't touch like nice. my phone. I get away from it. That's a good habit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it really, it's, it's weird. Um, there's, I can't remember the, that fact. Um, there's a fact that Les Brown said something uh, is something to do with your brain life cycles. It's like 10.5, which what basically means is that your subconscious, right. um, for the first 20 minutes of the day, it's really receptive. So anything you consume, Taken. it really affects your emotion for the rest of the day. Okay. So that's, and I understood that from looking at my phone and stopping it. Yeah. So I've just built habits to stop um, mm-hmm. social media from damaging. Um, but it'll still happen because I have to put hours and hours into social media. Yeah. So that's why I would really recommend is schedule. Schedule as much as possible. Yeah. I would strongly recommend that because it, it, I believe in business. If you can, if a robot can do it, then get a robot to do it. Um, okay. I don't believe that you should be wasting your time with something a robot could do. So that's what I put. I put scheduling platforms and they'll just... I'll create the content, that's the fun bit, but the schedule platform will do it all for me. So I'm not there spending hours every single day putting it on each account. And that Mm -hmm. really helps with um, getting stressed with trying to post on a hundred different accounts. So then you'll just schedule your time, do how many posts you're going to do a week and then they just set it and then forget it and come back to it in a a week's time. Yeah, I'll even go to like a month sometimes. I'll do 30 days, yeah, 30 days ahead. Um, It really is really helpful. It even gives you a good understanding of the strategy going forward yeah. it gives you a really good time to plan what's next and how that's going to link to the next month it really assists that was very cool actually there that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah because i always wonder like when you see brands on instagram like how do they like they must plan so far in advance to do launches and all this stuff but yeah it's like it, like how are they keep thinking of all this content like do you ever struggle to think up of content or do you or do you just have that creative side that just you struggle to figure out which is the best content because you have so much like so many ideas on the way I, the, the, I it was a really the way I changed it made it really easy was I, I changed from creating to documenting okay. so that was something I learned off Gary V actually was don't create document so it's just not trying to think of every day what my video should be or what my post should be it's just document what's going on what have I struggled with today what have I learned today mm-hmm. so it just makes it a lot more organic mm-hmm. uh, and it makes it a lot easier because I'm not having to constantly think like, right what am I going to post today I think well what have I learned because mm-hmm. if you haven't got if you haven't learned something each day I, that's another rule that I learned as well is that don't go to bed until you've learned something that day mm-hmm. always learn something okay. and that's why I'll post it and it's like okay that's what I've learned it allows me to reflect yeah. as well so okay. that's the way I do my uh, my social media that's pretty oh, that's very yeah. cool that's yeah. a really good insight because I know like and I think it'll just be a huge trend going forward will be that you know kids will probably look to social media as like a, a definite avenue for income mm, yeah and it's like oh we could make millions but imagine if you could just make like you know what's the average wage like kind of like 28k 32k mm. something like that mm-hmm. on social media that's pretty cool as well to be fair yeah. like if you could just have a like what would be considered a job from a nine five mm. you can have that as a with from your bedroom or yeah. something I don't yeah. know playing All these whatever they're doing now the Fortnite is always yeah. Fortnite <laughs> e-games yeah. has gone off the charts so that's the one so <laughs> like that, that, that is super super cool to be honest like it's it's great um, 
So Scott, just to pull you back on something that you said before. So you've okay. mentioned yeah. um, that you don't look at your phone in the morning for the yeah. first 20 minutes. Again, mm. that's something that we've had a chat about before, about things that we've cut out. Uh, me and James said, well, we don't really watch the news anymore. I find right. that quite draining on, on, my, on yeah. my energy. I'm watching. with you on that. Um, <laughs> so what other things <laughs> have you cut out? I guess, like you've said, to, to make your life more streamlined and work better for you, what have you added and what have you taken away? From let's say yourself, yeah. Let's you look at yourself three years. Let's ago. narrow it down. Like, what do you think? So, one key thing that you've added, and then what's the best thing that you've taken away? Mm. Like, you can't do the the fun thing. That's, that, that, that's <laughs> out now. You've already, you you played that card. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best thing I've taken away and added? When you say added, is that like something that I just something do that you like implemented? Like, like I don't know. Like, it can be anything. It can be something trivial. Like, I used I used. I used Headspace for like 40 oh, yeah. days in a row. Mm. I don't do it now, but I did implement mm. it. Like it did make a difference. Why yeah. I don't do it now, I'm not too sure. But anyway, like that's what I mean. Like a yeah. one thing, tiny thing, like it's only 10 minutes in your day, but just set you up for the day. Yeah. I just thought of one actually. Um, one thing I've had is running. Oh, that yeah. is like life changing. Just yeah. running uh, four to five times a week or just exercise. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Four to five, four to five times, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah, sounds like forty-five. I was like, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, no one's gonna commit to this. <laughs> no, no, like, five to five. no, four to five days. Yeah, four to five days. We recently did Manchester Marathon for the first time, ah, cool, which yeah. is really on the fun. weekend. No, it was a few years back. I was about, gonna say like it was super hot ago. recently. Oh, be yeah. A killer. Yeah, yeah. The London one was super hot. Someone, yeah. Um, but yeah, running is is a big thing is they de-stresses you it's so good for you and it's weird like those ideas come to me as well when i'm running mm-hmm. because it's just you um and oh another thing i added to that was i changed from listening to music to listening to audiobooks right okay because i don't like it coming back to the discipline i want to read i know everyone says you've got to read a book a week and all this i want to but i won't do it i will not yeah, yeah. i'm aware that i will not be disciplined to sit down for an hour now and read i just won't do it mm-hmm. however i will listen so I chose, I found a time where I can't get away from it. And that was running. So I run for an hour yeah, and then like I'll little... have to listen to it. Uh-huh. And I'll replay if I haven't yeah, yeah. taken it. Kind of hacked yourself. Yeah, I've just found a way of just hacking my day. Uh-huh. So I'd say that combination has been really, because I'm learning, the fitness, it's de-stressing, yeah. I'm having ideas. It's my own little time. I like that. There. Yeah. It's, it's a very peaceful time to do that. Yeah, and they say like, a, like I find it sometimes, like you get to a stage when you're running, and you feel like, oh, I could run forever now. Like yeah. just, and it's like, they call it like runner's high. And then it's like, a, I don't well, know, it's like a, you've got like tons of endorphins and all that stuff. Mm. And like it makes you feel proper good. Mm-hmm. It's like you just get to a point where you just think you can just keep running and running and running. So yeah, I get that. It's, it's kind of, I think it's a bit like a, I don't know, because it's like a constant state. And like I wanted to research stuff about flow recently. Mm. And I think running is one of those things like you get to that, a stage when you're running where it's natural yeah you don't feel tired yeah you just like in kind of in your own head and then as soon as you realize you are you're out of it yeah but it's still pretty I but that's it. like meditation i guess yeah so it's i don't know i kind of see like running could be like a it's like meditative a, yeah I, agree. I completely agree yeah, it's usually I a 30 so. minute mark for me that's when yeah. i just my breathing's right and i just i'm just running i'm not thinking it's just like mm. second nature cool that's nice yeah running's a Running is becoming a lot more popular, maybe, I think. Because like, it's, mm. one, it's, mm. like, it's free as well, so you, yeah. if you want to go out and run. Well, I think, I think my mindfulness is quite something that's, that's getting mm. quite big now. Well, and you've seen head, yeah. Headspace come out, um, and there just seems to be so much out there now in the mind, and I think that, that that's a great thing. I think it's, it's positive, and I think more people should take time to, to reflect on the day. It's something so simple to do. Mm. Uh, take a few minutes reflect on the day what did you like what didn't you like mm. what would you change if you could change it absolutely um, and I think as an entrepreneur it's just key yeah. to reflect on your 100%. day and being able to yeah because it's, it's like things. little wins every day you might not appreciate it at the time no. but as long as you're going in that general the right direction and you know but sometimes you don't appreciate it like if you're going 100 miles an hour you want to sit back mm. and look and think oh actually things have changed but you just like you don't realize day to day. That's the biggest thing. Like headspace was a good one. It makes you like That's chill right. out, calm down. Absolutely. I think that could have be a, have a look the, at the biggest killer of entrepreneurs as well is that just 
I'm so focused. I need to be, I need to not think of what I've achieved. I just need to go, 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 go. Yeah. And I see that with so many entrepreneurs who are starting out and like, you're going to crash at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to crash at some point. Please start like, you might be able to go for the next year, but you're going to crash at some point. Yeah. And it's not going to be nice. Please just have some you time. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. Because Balance, of, isn't it? Yeah. The, the weird thing about probably us two, like myself and Julian, is that, I don't know, I mean, <clears throat> and definitely from myself, is that I'd, like, I've got aspirations to make it in whatever, like, whatever tag you want to put on it, like big mm. goal, like headline goals. But yeah. I want to do it, I really want to do it easy. Like I want to, I don't, I don't want it to be too, like, not that I don't want it to be too hard, but I don't, I think you I don't believe do it, it has Like to I think I'm, I can do it in a way that's not, on your like I'm terms. not killing myself up at like Gary V style, like four hours of sleep. <laughs> because, like I've listened to like podcasts about sleep and, uh, all that stuff and like the health benefits around it and how you need to be getting like Joe Rogan just had a podcast I can't remember mm. the guy was on there but it was crazy it was the, it was the author of Why We Sleep okay. that, that is so cool like I'll check that out 100% like it's crazy how, how good it was and I was like you know what I don't want to like I take the same principle into sales like I don't want a customer to ever think that I'm absolutely busting balls to get a sale mm. ever mm. and I just, I just want, I'd like to carry that on into business. I'd like to just keep it like I, as I am as a person. Like I'm pretty, like I'm quite laid back to be fair. So I'd like to take that into business, like make it. I don't know. That's the reason for the podcast is to try and get people into it. Like it, you don't have to be going absolutely no. nuts every day. Like it's all important. Like oh, if you're not like be a wolf, mm. not a sheep, <laughs> yeah. not a lion. <laughs> For well, that's, sake, like, and that's when it comes to what's your definition of entrepreneurship it's everyone has a different definition due to these Instagram lifestyles and all these mm. uh, influencers and I think some of these influencers are incredible like the advice they give like it's amazing but yeah. it's Who's just it? creating a really dangerous what it's how people got, perceive it as well image, yeah it's an who's it, who's it, who as influencers go, mm. who do you kind of look up to? Because we actually talked about one okay. just before the podcast, didn't we? We were joking yeah. about, uh, have you heard of Grant Cardone? Yeah, okay, he's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so like we were saying like, oh, I just like, we personally think it's too much. I can't. Yeah, well, he is. Sell, sell, sell. So, 10x, 10x. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 10x. <laughs> like, he's, he's every cool that every day. And, I, and to a certain extent, like I've listened to Be Obsessed to Be Average and it is kind of motivational but there's only like with all books there's only certain chunks that you really take out of it mm. but yeah back to the question who's like content at the moment do you think is like well it would speak what does it speak to you like what's the um is it what mentors like, do you have what, i guess like, mentor like, virtual mentor yeah <laughs> so i have so like the big influence that everyone's know that everyone knows um i would say you know peter Vug. No, I've not heard no, of it. I'm a big fan of it. So obviously Gary Vee, that's what... Um, I, Gary Vee's great. Like, he is great. It, it gets a bit much for me sometimes. I find it a bit um, it, Yeah, it's a bit... It gets a bit irritating, but it gives great advice. But for me, Peter Vuk is more my level. He doesn't throw content as much. Um, he does really good podcasts and really good um, interviews. Um, and he's he's known as, like, the millennial entrepreneur. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, nice. I'll check him out. Um, I'd recommend him. I, I really click with him. Like, everything he says, just, I like, get. Yeah, and it just mm -hmm. really speaks to me. So yeah. I quite like his content because um, it's not as intense. And it yeah. just just brings out really good uh, mm -hmm. monthly content. Um, but in regards to my actual mentors that I have, that I meet and speak to, um, number one, my father. Um, he will always be a mentor due to it's how I got into business was right. through him was just um, got indoctrinated into the beauty industry mm -hmm. was in beauty literally until I started this business okay so I wanted to just divert because I just I just I was happy with the time I loved it but I wanted to um, go my own way now um, mm -hmm. so he's always there with his wisdom um, then I have a few I've met like I have a marketing mentor mm -hmm. um, called James Nicholson he helps me with all my marketing um and then i have um like a, a like a life mentor like when it comes to more self-awareness and then i have um like another mentor for like m uh, management uh, of like teams and growing how the basic strategy of growing the business okay so i have a few different uh mentors of, and that was recommended through a guy called jay allen who said you need a mentor who's really good at everything like really good at hr really good at finance really good at sales mm -hmm. uh and just have more 
Uh, and I think having mentors is such a big thing. I think a lot of people have mentors and don't mm. even realise they've got mentors. Um, for me, the first mentor I ever had was one of my sales managers that I had and he mm. really showed me the way of personal growth and what benefits there is from it. So it sounds like you've got quite a few mentors mm. there and would you say those guys have, have a huge impact on... Yeah, huge. Yeah, I would... I go to them if I've got any... If I've got any issues in the business, I go to my dad or if I or I go to life. Um, mm-hmm. And then when it comes to marketing, understanding, trying to stay ahead of the game and making right. sure there's bums in seats every single month because... That's the joy of social media. It changes all the time. Right. Um, so one month, the strategy can be work perfectly. And this happened 2017. My strategy worked perfectly. It came 28. Didn't work at all. Okay. Not all. And it was like, oh my God. <laughs> I have clients and I suddenly can't put thumbs in seats. And it, but this part of social media, I knew it was going to have it. Yeah, well, I didn't know it was going to happen, but it happens. Like okay. I know this happens. And that's where you can look to them and say, right, how do I get ahead of this? Yeah. And it's all part of it. It's part of the fun. Mm-hmm. So, part of the mastermind of what we do is we like the listeners that we've got out there. We want to sort of create a mental picture of what each entrepreneur sort of have in common and what okay. common skills and traits they have. So, so far in your life, what would you say has been the biggest attribute towards your success? Is there a particular trait in yourself mm-hmm. that's, I guess, something you've developed over the years and you've, you've seen yeah. that you've got? Because we, we asked you to... You know, pick up like a like habits you've changed or yeah. like bad habits. But yeah, what's the what's the one thing like that's deep rooted in you? That's like, that's I, like hardwired. You don't really see. It. People might not really see it, but you um, like it just keeps you going, and it's got you to where you are like today. I didn't, see. I think I know what's hardwired in me, but I don't necessarily think it's the greatest attribute of me. Okay. What's that? And then there's something that I've developed that has definitely helped tremendously so what's hardwired into me is my ocd nature of just overthinking things Mm -hmm. so that could be an enemy and a friend right so sometimes it's good because it stops me from saying things or so uh gets me in the right conversations or i think a bit more of what someone's actually saying to me Mm -hmm. um so at times it works awesome and it create an amazing relationship other times it's just a waste of time and i don't get anywhere (laughs) so (laughs) that's that's hardwired and that's not going anywhere Mm -hmm. no the thing that I believe that's truly got to me where I am is just the development of my confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did a lot of that from doing videos, public speaking. Yeah. Um, so I just, I love public speaking now. Yeah. And I just do it. Even though it makes me feel uncomfortable, I just love throwing myself in that. Yeah. And I feel that has just put my confidence like off the charts compared to what it was. Okay. Um, so that has not stopped me from doing things, from getting conversations, mm-hmm. turn up to events where you feel like I shouldn't be here. <laughs> I should not be here, but you are and you speak, you just forget some really good connections. So that's allowed me to throw myself in situations where I wouldn't have believed I should be in, but it's then created mm-hmm. what I am today. So yeah, confidence is such, such a big thing. That's it. Well, such... and how, how have you built your confidence then? Would you say what, what, what did it take for you to realize that you could build on your confidence? Was there a part of the business where you, where you got to a certain client and you realize, oh shit, I'm in a bit of a deep end here. Mm. What has there was there a situation where you realized this is something that I need to work on? Yeah. What was the, what was the prompt to, to do the I public guess, speaking? Like, when to... you're not confident and you know, you're not confident. Yeah. But then it's like, what's the one, like there must've been something that's like, I can't, I'm not going to get anywhere if I don't sort this out. Mm. Like, yeah. Did you have a, like, a, 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 that like moment? A, a weird, like a, a bit cliche, but like an epiphany or a light bulb moment where you're like in the situation, like you, you step back from it. And like, yeah. This, it's got to change now. Mm. Mm. I think I went through that process in my first startup um, because I realized nothing was going to happen if i didn't do anything mm-hmm. and the first thing for that start to happen was to pick up the phone and to just call universities because it was a, it was a student discount website for beauty products mm-hmm. um so a big part of it was getting student unions on board so mm-hmm. just constantly just call call and call call and, and in sales you're gonna know exactly what that's like <laughs> um and it's tough and it's quite ruthless at times mm-hmm. so that i realized from doing that like if i wasn't didn't have the confidence to push through that 
because um, the, the, there's times we took it quite hurtful sometimes like it can be quite when you stand out of business because you don't understand that whereas now it's like oh, whatever like they say that I don't care like move on Next. but at first it's like oh <laughs> like, it's like the like, put down on me yeah it's yeah. like horrible why do you not care about me because yeah. no one cares it's like who are you mm-hmm. um, so I think that gave me a bit of a reality check mm. um, but it allowed me to say right I need to start pushing my conference and um how i actually built my conference was through facebook lives i did okay. so that's i usually bring that into my talk is um how i use social media to build conferences i wanted to do videos i wanted to do a youtube channel for like five yeah. years and uh-huh. i just always yeah, yeah, yeah. like i don't have the camera equipment i don't have it. it's just all rubbish lies i'm saying Excuses. to myself yeah. and then finally realized one day this is all excuses. It just clicked. It's just like being more self-aware. I think it's yeah. so, so important to be self-aware because mm. since I have, I just, I quickly seen the bullshit in my head. I've gone, wait, that's bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's bullshit. And that, that, that was another realisation. I finally just picked up the camera, did it. It was really uncomfortable, sweating. It was horrible. <laughs> but it, but since doing that, I found that if I do uncomfortable things, it, my confidence goes through the roof. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. this, this is the first podcast I've ever done. So this yeah. is an un- uncomfortable thing, but, Mm-hmm. it feels good and from doing those uncom- uncomfortable things have you seen that you've been able to create sort of new opportunities and I guess you're sort of changing the pattern in your life you're doing things that you've not done before out of your comfort zone mm. and from the outside perspective did you see different results did you get people on board your social media from putting yourself out there did you, have, did you get yeah. any sort of interaction was there, a, was there a trend to that like as your confidence was going up and you was, you was doing more like Facebook live all this stuff mm. Was your was your following increasing with it? Is there like a trend there? So did the conference create? Yeah, um, yeah. It's follow, it it definitely well, it definitely built clients and mm-hmm. it, it started creating sales because I started actually throwing myself in the uh, right scenarios and the right events to speak to people. Mm-hmm. Um, so absolutely, that I credit where I am today through just conference of speaking to the right people just. And sometimes you just have to be in the right time, but yeah. that happens, right? It doesn't but you, it's a, All right. for you to be there. Is, yeah. You have to be confident to actually. Stay. I've got a, a question around that then, and it's it's just kind of popped in my head. So, um, like confidence of like, so we're talking about confidence, mm-hmm. speaking to people. Do you think it is confidence of yourself or what you've got to say is important, or is it the confidence in yourself that if they reject you on that level of trying to say sell to them? Mm. that it doesn't affect your like how you feel mm. what's more important does that make sense you rephrase it a little bit um so say like i, I approached julian and I yeah him, and i'm trying to sell him i don't know a phone mm-hmm. like wh- which part of this dynamic is more important how i would potentially take that rejection that he says no go away i don't want a phone mm. and you like you might take it quite personal yeah or is the confidence of knowing what i've got to like i know what i'm gonna say yeah i know i can provide value to him yeah i've got something like a, yeah. a good product uh, or a good service like which where does do you think it's like a rounded confidence is like a merge of those two things or they're totally separate because like i like if someone tells me no like mm. i'm not bothered if they, they yeah. say no like it's not i don't have that personal i don't take it personally for me absolutely yeah. but i also have the like I will provide, I know that, if I know I'm going to provide value to this person, I will say it, it with confidence. Mm. Like, do you think it's, do you ever think of it in that way? Like, it's just come to me, like, that's kind of the dynamic of confidence. Because mm. it's like, one, how confident are you? Mm. And two, how confident can you persistently be whilst getting rejected? Mm. Like, how, do you know what I'm, yeah, you know what I'm getting yeah, at? Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely you have to detach from the emotion side of it yeah. It, it definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. It, and that like I said it was the first start there was emotion there it was like mm-hmm. hurtful uh, but through mentorship I started to understand how business worked and mm-hmm. that it was just part of business and you, especially if you call calling mm-hmm. um, so definitely there are times still it's if you really try to get someone on board obviously it's going to be a bit down like it's hard not to feel down if you've not got someone you want on board but no, I from going to a lot of events, speaking to people, it's just happy with. If they say no, they say no because you know they're missing out. Yeah, um, otherwise you'd cool. be approaching them. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, And I never want. I'd rather. 
I want to get to the situation where I'm not chasing people, they're chasing me. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I want to ultimately create. So um, I don't get offended by anything or I try not to be anyway. Yeah. Um, and I feel that's really important otherwise. It is. You're just going to be beaten up every single day. Yeah, yeah. I totally, is... totally, totally, totally <laughs> agree. That's, yeah, that's what I was getting at. Yeah. And it, it does take time to get to that position to be able to, you need to have those uncomfortable situations to mm. look back mm. and reflect and say, hey, yeah. I don't need to feel this way about the situation. It's going to happen no, all the time. No, but you need to go through it. You need to experience it. Yeah. And you need to be offended by it at, at first. Like the yeah. best thing that ever happened to me in sales was like the first big deal I ever tried to close, like it fell through at the last minute and I was absolutely raging. Like I was in my car afterwards and I was just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. just, and, <laughs> but that was the best thing. Like, cause then, you know, you just, you know that everything's not set in stone. And mm. I don't know. It was just, it's kind of good in a way. It's like a, we always do like off the podcast we'll like take the mick out of like cliche sayings but it is like mm. one of those things like a uh, fail forward yeah you know I mean? like fail right. forward yeah. so i don't know it's, no. that's 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 my two cents on it like the, no, but can't. you're right absolutely like if you can cut that personal like uh you wouldn't understand it on that that level that it's yeah not personal. it's not like, it's not no. it's not personal it's business no. but it is and it's it's, yeah, especially it's when it's true. your baby when it's your staff it's only you in the business mm. it's hard not to take it yeah all right so let's flip it back <laughs> let's go to you were chatting earlier about like you've always studied business being around business mm. what is it that you love about business so what motivates you is it the money the, the people the excitement like the process i don't know yeah at the mo i think it'll change but at the moment it's just creating <laughs> interesting things with people like it's just so cool i just enjoy it so much mm. when i collaborate with someone who because it I, I don't know why but i find it so tough to find people who think like me and want to achieve things like me right and finally it took i got into the right networks and now i'm with those people that is and it, so true it's yeah. so cool to be like you're on my level like yeah. you want to do you want world dominance as well yeah. <laughs> you want it all and it's just to have that fire and be in the room with someone who has the same fire increases it doesn't it yeah, yeah it like it you up. ten times more yeah so i love I love the process, but I I love the result as well. The result mm -hmm. is always what I'm tied to. Like when you finally see this big event that's happened, or this workshop that you've been mm -hmm. putting months and months into, the process can be stressful and it, it can be tough. But you know it's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely, I'm tied to the result of it. What what it actually creates, and yeah. to know when you're standing there with the person you create, it's just it's just it you just get a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. I, I'm attached to that at the moment. Um, and that's why I love doing events because it's continuously giving value to other people. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I really enjoy that. Just giving value to people. Yeah. So the process and you were talking about, um, documenting. Yeah. I like, can don't create a document. Like yeah. that's pretty cool actually. And, like that's probably, a, like when I watch like vlogs on YouTube, that's all it is really. Yeah. Like, people document. just documenting. Yeah. The day. Mm -hmm. It's not really, to be honest, like it's not overly creative. No. But it's probably more interesting because it's real mm. so have you ever thought about doing started to like actually vlog mm. when you're organizing the event or do you think that's give would that give too much value like how you go about ruining a, your business because it would be very open like, yeah. of how you would organize an event structure it like you're not maybe calls you're making but like you know like have you ever thought yeah. about doing that absolutely i would vlog every single thing i do um I wouldn't be scared of giving too much value. I think the greatest way of being, building your personal bond is giving, giving too much. Yeah. Just giving too yeah. much mm -hmm. is just, and people will be so, because that's how Gary Vee wins. Is he has so much content, but you're overwhelmed by it, and that's mm -hmm. what he's trying to do: just overwhelm your content. And you're like, right, but he doesn't sell anything on it, so that's quite unique. But if mm -hmm. he did, pff, people would buy that straight away, and that's what you can do on top of that. And people get overwhelmed, not necessarily uh, consume all your content. But they will, you suddenly sell something, I'll be like, right, this is the good stuff, let's go yeah. buy it. So I'd be happy to do it. Um, I've tried it, I just found it was too time consuming. Uh -huh. Like, I would, what I really want to do is when I uh, 
feel stable enough is to actually have someone to constantly be with me um who would, videographer every day. yeah and be like video- they'd be, That'd be very cool yeah. business as well i have a friend who has who does that at the moment and it works really well for him mm-hmm. and i would love that like i really want to do that and have them it'd be cool to have some there than just myself all the time oh, so, yeah, um, yeah, yeah that would be cool so i have a few so there's there's one event i get to every single month um i get to that it's in leeds um and that um is all to do self development. Uh, just it, it's my what I see is is just my reality check. Okay, like it just it just clicks my mind into reality. Go, ah, I've been. Sorry uh, to interrupt you. There. What's that on. event called? Um, it's called the Elite Network. Elite Network. Yeah, okay. the Elite Network. I'd recommend it. Um, they're in about seven or eight cities in the UK. Um, in the Crown Plaza in Leeds every every month. Um, and that's really good. They have two speakers, and I. Because it's like a family, whereas I've been to a lot of events, and I'm sure if you've been to events, some events it's just sell. It's just everyone's pitching to each other. It's not, if you're going to get connections, like, yes, it can work, but it's not really, you don't really gain much value from it. It's just mm-hmm. everyone trying to pitch each other. Whereas this is more of a family. It's the same people every month. It's, and it's there, like, people genuinely care. It's okay. not more kept, like, people, like, saying, what's your problem? We discuss our issues. Um, so that really helps my knowing myself. Mm-hmm. So that's like my little group of that. And then in regards to actually the business, um, I have my mentors who I can call freely through the week. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have them, even my clients, like they mentors, like in what they've achieved, like they're naturally um, uh, like going to, because I run events, it's like loads of little masterminds because mm-hmm. I meet so many interesting people. Yeah. So it, it's like I have a little mastermind every month anyway, or every week of the events anyway because I just meet so many smart interesting people who will just give me so many different ideas right um, but I do think it can be a bit overwhelming at time and I think that's another problem that a lot of entrepreneurs is um, they'll follow like 10 different influences and they think oh my god they're all I say scrap all that just follow one or two okay because it's just so easy to get overwhelmed and think you're doing something but you're not doing anything right so that's why I tend to only take into uh, consideration the information that I get from my personal development group and my mentors okay. um, because otherwise it just gets too noisy and you won't get anything done. Okay, that makes a lot of sense actually because yeah. Yeah, you can get distracted by oh, so a lot of things and you're like, oh, that's a good idea and then you listen to it. Two days later, there's another great idea. Mm. And yeah. It's, it's, it's cool but then at the same time, yeah, you just get lost in the wave of yeah, I can wanting to do different things or take a, me a, lot a different sometimes. twist. Yeah, I struggle with that. We like to focus down on it. Yeah, the focus is so difficult. It's so, it's so tough. Uh, so one thing we like to do on on the show is like to myth bust. Um, <laughs> okay. What's the worst piece of advice? Well, well, yeah, what's the worst piece of advice <laughs> you've been yeah, given? Worst piece of advice. <laughs> You don't have to out. You don't have to name it. No, 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 no. you don't have to quote them, Adam, because I'm sure they won't be too happy. But uh, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, actually, it was. Oh, I got really angry at this. Actually, um, it was, and it was a few people that agreed with it. And you'll get angry at this. Um, they were saying sales isn't important to business. And I was just like, <laughs> "What? Like <laughs> that's business? Like you sell? Like how does a business function?" And they were like, no, "No, sales isn't right. Like I don't want to be that sort of sales type person." It's like, well, "Why are you in business? Like what?" You don't have to be a a, sa- a sales type person at all. Like that's. To sell, that, yeah, you don't. That's it. Like I have looked at people that work in sales and I've been I've terrified. Said, I think like, do I? I, I think I've said it's like, because my mum was in is in the same industry. I was like, oh, do I come across like that? And she was like, no, no, no. I'd tell you if you did. And I was like, thank God, because it's terrifying. But I see the. It feels like a previous going. generation kind of thing where yeah. sales is really frowned upon, and it is. Yeah, it, it can be. It's just it that perception. Every, there's a perception in every yeah, area, isn't like there? Like dodgy car sales. Yeah, it's like just that like really like stupid perception. Yeah. But again, it's just yeah. a perception. That's but all. Yeah, business, all like, if you don't sell anything, you're, <laughs> you're going to run out of cash to do anything. <laughs> yeah. so. It's just... It's, yeah, revenue is everything. Like, getting that, that cash flow in. Getting so that was yeah. a, the worst piece of... Your worst piece of sales is not important. That's, yeah, that's like, a, that's it angered me. It angered me. Yeah, like, in a group of people that agreed, I was just like, oh. I walked away from the conversation. I was just like, but wow. sales is in like a like a just a general sense. Is mm. that what it was? The... Yeah, well, they're saying because the person was having an issue with uh, trying to promote their uh, social media account, 
Uh, and I was like, well, have you picked up a phone to someone? They're like, well, no, I'm not. I don't want to be too salesy. I was like, if you don't tell anyone about it, no one's gonna know. Mm. He's like, no, I don't want to be that kind of person. Why are you asking me how to sell yeah. this account if you're not willing to pick up the phone to people? You have to do that, and yeah. you're going to be turned down more than you're going to be accepted. But yeah. that's part of it. That's part of business. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and I think that full of... circles back around to the, the personal development. A lot of people will put off a lot of things. They probably don't how... want to sell. Yeah, they don't it's want. Scary. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, something it new for them that they haven't done. Yeah. yeah. And uh, by having excuses, it's a way of putting mm. it off until it has to be done. I think. So. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, uh, if you had one piece of advice to give to someone who's starting out on their own, yeah, like on you, their own like, business, sort of like, what advice would you give to yourself like five years ago? Like five now that ago. you've learned a lot, talked to a lot of people, done mm-hmm. a lot, failed a lot, succeeded a lot, yeah. learned a what's lot about the, yourself. If... What's the advice? Like, what's the There's so much? Like even to like a. Uh like a general mm. hit him with a few it doesn't have to be just one okay. like what's the because there's one that I always say because it was a quote that my dad gave me and I've always kept to it but then there's something I've learned recently so I'll do the one that I've always kept to and that's a uh, quote uh, ready shoot aim mm-hmm. um, so it just basically means just don't plan too much just get on with it it's mm-hmm. just ready shoot aim get on with it stop moaning and because the quickest way you're going to understand if it works or not is to get on with it and to do it um, you could spend a year planning it, put it to the customer and be like, no, I'm not interested. And it's like, you put a year that's, into that. That's very true. And it's yeah. just like, you're, I think it's so easy to get tied up into, you know everything because it's your product or your service. You feel like you know it all. Yeah. Um, so suddenly you feel like you know every single customer and what their needs are. Right. Um, so ready, shoot, aim. Okay. Then the other one, which I've learned recently um, from going to Tanzania is that it's, it's things how do I explain it everything works out in the end right um, because I'm a big warrior <laughs> like I worry a lot um, I try to get I've got better at it but I do I just naturally worry you know that's me as well I, I was yeah I'm well. not sure uh, which I don't think is good but I naturally worry and, um, but from doing my experience two weeks in Tanzania which lots of things went wrong lots of things went right but at the end of the day everything still happened yeah. even though things went drastically wrong at times and if I learned anything from there it was like no matter how much you worry it, things just figure themselves out yeah. so I always now and I think that's why it's so good having experiences that go wrong because whenever I pose a big issue I go right I just look back to another big issue I go it, it sorted itself out mm-hmm. even though this looks like it's never going to be sorted I just relate back to an experience I go that sorted itself out this will be sorted and, and I, that, I found that really helpful. Being able to keep your cool under those tight yeah, situations. And, absolutely. And again, me, I really think that it feels like everything is really all relative. Um, mm. Like that goes back to the whole mindfulness of what we've talked about, yeah. jogging, keeping your mind in the right place. Mm. Those little things will attribute to when you get into those situations to be able to calm yourself. And be like, yeah. yeah, I've dealt with that six months ago. Mm. No big deal. Let's carry on moving forward and yeah. just... do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, is there any topics that you're quite keen on at the moment that's like fresh in your mind that you want to touch on before we wrap up um the big thing that i'm doing at the moment is so i i I mean i run a social media company for events but the big thing that i'm focusing on at the moment is um to start running my own workshops okay because i run events for other people Uh um which i love doing but i want the the plan was always to start running my own events okay um so now i've understood how events work that's what i'm trying to do now and why I mentioned mental health is that's what I'm doing. I'm combining social ah. media and mental health together. Okay. Um, because I don't feel like many or any workshops I've been to have ever touched on it. No. Um, so through, it'll be roughly about a two-day workshop on a monthly, uh, every month. Um, I'll be doing social media, combining mental health, just being more responsible. It won't be too heavy on mental health, but there'll be an hour or two just making sure people are aware of the effects of, yes, I'm teaching you to do this for your business, but please be aware of what this can create. Just, yeah. You can still do it, but you just have to be aware and how to manage it. Mm-hmm. So I, what I'm looking to do is to do those workshops globally. So I've done one in Tanzania, um, and I'm looking to start them in the UK. Um, I'm in conversation with doing them in Ghana, uh, in Zimbabwe, and Uganda at the moment. Um, cool. So that's to do with it. It's, it's I really want to do it to underdeveloped communities as well that I don't have even have access to a laptop, let alone the internet. Right. Um, so I'm wanting to do it there as well. So I'm in combination with them. 
um, like a guy called Eden Amnuki who runs Young Creative Leaders. Um, that I'm partnering up with him and Amin Deshi who runs Imagine Bradford, a mental health um, company. We're working together to do these things. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm really trying to achieve at the moment is carry those workshops. Um, and I feel it's really important because then I do my bit for my area, which I don't oh. really see, which is a shame. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and, and what is it about yourself, about your persona that makes you want to do that extra and help people? Because there are yeah. a lot of businesses out there that choose not to do that, that just go after yeah. the profits. Yeah. Or they just do it because it looks like, because it, looks, it good. looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, personal experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, you relate to it. Yeah, I relate to it. So I don't know if you want me to dive into this. I'll briefly dive into the story. Um, I went through, so I've been suffering since the age of 15 with panic attacks. Okay. Uh-huh. But I only recognised this last year. Okay. So I did not know I was experiencing them until last year because one night when I was in my final year at university, um, I was, if you've ever felt a panic attack, it's the weirdest feeling. It mimics a heart attack. Like your heart's pumping out of your chest, right. you're sweating, your head's you're dizzy, you're shaking, you can't breathe. It's the weirdest out-of-body experience. And obviously not knowing what was happening, I was like, am I having a heart attack? Like, I didn't know what else to say. Like, I didn't know what was happening. I was like, am I, am I dying? So I honestly, I, I got a taxi and went to hospital and um, ring my mum didn't make it any, any better. Obviously, she freaked out. Panicked as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, which yeah. made a panic attack 10 times worse. <laughs> um, and then I finally realised it was a panic attack. And then just, I realized all these experiences. I was mm-hmm. like, since the age of 15, I've been experiencing it. So, and how that ties into social media is that um, when I did my first startup, um, I just was putting like 80 to 100 hours every single week into it. Yeah. 6% of that time was purely in social media. And when I did, re- uh, and then basically uh, about 11 months after that, I crashed horribly. Right. And that's where my panic attacks really kicked off uh, again. Um, so I've always been tied to mental health, not even realizing it until last year, um, had a horrible part of two months in 2016 to do social media, okay. even though I run a social media marketing agency. <laughs> so my experience of it is that I want to promote what I do is I still love it, but I want to promote it in an ethical way. So people are aware of the seriousness of it. Yeah. Um, it, it gets absolutely rinsed now. Social media. doesn't? It? Yeah. Like it's just, we've just, just so anything. many agencies and so many brands that it's just, yeah. To be noticed is so difficult now. It's yeah. Well, that's it. The way to be noticed is to be authentic and, like mm. you say, to have a consideration for, like yeah, you said, the mental yeah. issues. It's mm. those kind of businesses that tend to, to, to and flourish. And I guess you, you have a more loyal, like, um, following. It might yeah. be smaller, but it'll be more. It'll it's be more been... loyal. Like if you're yourself, and then that attracts by that does mm. just attract the right people that just get you. Like you didn't say, like mm. you follow an influencer and you like. Yeah, like it just yeah. clicks for you straight away. Yeah. That's what you, that's the relationship I would want mm. with people from this podcast mm. and listen to it and like, yeah, you know, I just relate to what they're saying. Like, they just, they're like, I feel like they're like me in a way. Mm. Or they're speaking something that resonates yeah. know, with me. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing. Because I read it in a book from Seth Gordon and he was like, it's better to have like 2,000 loyal followers than 100,000. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Just people. Mm-hmm. Don't buy followers, anyone. No, no. God. <laughs> like, yeah, but do, you, do you think that's actually... We, we can go into about more social media, actually, because it does interest <laughs> us, because yeah. we're not really... We're not well-versed in it, to be honest. Like, we're proper... Like, we know what we're it is. We're trying as but, we go, right? But, like, yeah. actually developing a strategy, like, even just talking to you for, like, that 10-minute part about how you work things was mm. very interesting to us. But we, like, we could go into a lot on social media about like what's out there what's like mm. so like do you feel like people are still do you think brands probably do buy a lot of followers yeah. to make sure yeah 100%. to make the make their sort of uh, audience or look popularity yeah. business size you know look, look much bigger that's still a problem yeah the big businesses do I, i've seen it happen i've seen it happen where they suddenly just jumped up ten thousand followers in a day it's just like that's just so fake. It's just so. It, they do do it. I mean, some of the big companies they don't need to do because they naturally have millions. But they, and then that falls into the mental health side of things. Of this, just it's trying to satisfy yourself that you are important. That you have to have. Everyone has to have a hundred thousand followers or whatever, which, oh, because yeah. that means that your brand is not special. It doesn't mean shit. Yeah. It doesn't mean. Shit. It doesn't mean. When you think about it like that, it doesn't, you... mean, shit. It doesn't mean anything. It, 
It, just, it doesn't mean they're successful either, does it? Doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It means you've got some followers. Out. Exactly. Yeah. You're not going to gain anything from it. You'll gain no sales from it. It's a hundred thousand, you've got bot accounts, or it's just random people mm-hmm. that have no interest in what you do. All it does is it just makes you look a bit more special. And mm-hmm. people come to your business and realize you're not at that level and you're not going to hit the value they'd be expecting. So I've had arguments with clients at times where it's, they're wanting to buy followers. There's only one time where I've had to accept it. Because, like, it was just... Which I couldn't... I understand because they were about to launch a uh, brand, so... I can understand it. Launching with 100 followers when it's a completely new beauty range, I can understand it, but mm-hmm. I would never recommend it. Because no. it just... It destroys all your following. It's hard to use that for then targeting and so forth, so... Yeah, I guess I'll do, like, the back-end stuff. Yeah. Like, knowing what your demographic is on your, on mm, your account. Exactly. It's better to it's have it It's organic. really good information you get from your social media, what times they're on there, what age they're like. Yeah. You can get some really good information. Yeah, because I guess you would be, you'd be screwed if you bought a lot of yourself. If you yeah. bought a lot of followers, then you were trying to do your scheduling. Like, it'd be way off. Exactly. Like, you wouldn't know when really to post. You'd have be no indicator. Yeah. So it just ruins everything. It's just, you may as well get rid of the account. Mm. Very cool. Yeah. Nice. A lot of people have met, like use influencer accounts mm. like to like affiliates. Do you think that's a good way to go for brands that are launching? Like if you had a startup and a product, if you could find like um, accounts, like a, in like personal influencers mm. in that field that will, you know, sort of not in a way, sort of sell your product. Like they would have, obviously have to believe in like it. Like be a, like a yeah, or like a, even if they yeah. had like a commission structures, all that sort of stuff. It seems mm. quite common. Like I follow uh, oh, right. a lot of like maybe fitness people, and they always plug in like a oh, protein brand or like a network brand. marketing sort of yeah, kind skin, of well yeah. yeah, whatever it's called. I'm, yeah. I'm kind of <laughs> I'm pretty blind to it. Not blind to it, but yeah, I'm not in that in that field. It, so yeah, yeah, that's become really popular. I mean naturally we a lot of businesses are network marketing without necessarily implementing the strategy because like um because they have advocates like that's a really popular thing again in beauty but in most businesses you want to build people are completely sold on your brand to then sell it for you Mm -hmm. um and then they just get a commission off it so for beauty it works great um again for like events it can work really well Mm -hmm. um so that structure does work well in businesses as long as it's structured correctly because obviously network marketing's had a lot of bad um uh it can have a bad perception from a lot of people Mm -hmm. but it is it's done a lot of good it can if done correctly it can be really really effective Uh and i've seen it work really well um and then with bloggers 100 percent, they can be hugely effective but it's getting i think you can quickly go wrong with bloggers because like we said of buying followers and there's so many instagram famous blockers now mm. or you perceive instagram famous but i can tell very quickly whether it's a good account you just look at the engagement the comments and you can tell you can even buy comments and likes you can do it all um, yeah we had this conversation the other day like we we wondered if you can buy comments you can so. i've tried it all i've tried i've tried i pushed social media accounts to the limit and got banned just to see what it would happen just, see what happens. just to see how it works and uh, just to see how to understand the account like, how stringent are the social media accounts and monitoring the like... each one's different um Twitter's really easy. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Maybe I shouldn't divulge in that, but um, Twitter is quite easy to get around in regards to. It's because there's so many bot accounts there. Um, Facebook and Instagram are a lot harder. Um, use, there's still strategies to hack it, as they say. Um, but if you're continuously hacking it, then you don't really want to be continuously focused on that because if you are, then really your profile isn't probably that good yeah. um mm. like i can hack accounts people say when i say hack i don't mean actual hack no, no, no 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 yeah, i just yeah, mean yeah. like strategies that quickly get followings uh-huh. yeah which i can do but you don't want to continuously be doing that because it just means that you want your not organic to do it organically because mm. it's just going to be so stressful and time consuming to continuously do these strategies mm-hmm. it's just not worth it you, it's just better to do, have great content and you'll blow up so much faster yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll be so much better Cool. No, I agree. No, that's very interesting. Yeah, genuinely. That's oh, good. definitely be coming to you for some yeah, <laughs> social yeah, media yeah. advice <laughs> on yeah, our own benches. Definitely. But it's sc- such a hard one because there's no because it's because it's pretty. It's like a new social media is kind of like a new phenomenon. Like 
mm. in, if you look back in like yeah. go forward like a hundred years yeah. kids will be probably studying about it in like yeah because it's kind of started here with oh it Google. has yeah, yeah. So, social media marketing degrees and everything yeah like, so yeah exactly so yeah. it's like learning on the job isn't it like yeah. everyone's everyone's learning on the job some people are just better faster like yourself yeah. like you, you you just kind of get it you can yeah. tell when you the way you speak about it it's it's not a sell it's just like that it's mm. like a calm not, genuine knowledge that you've got mm-hmm. like which is it's pretty cool to see Thank you. um so yeah like but then for some people like it's so difficult like it's like the most br- like mind-blowing thing on earth <laughs> like, it's like, it's like to some people you're probably like a like a wizard or something, like yeah. a witch, like a alien. <laughs> like it's like you've got some sort of powers because it's, it's so crazy. Mm. But the interesting thing of that is I, I was never the smart guy in school. I was never, I was in the low classes. I was never the smart guy at, uh, at college. Like I wasn't the guy who was switched on, but like, he's going to be a millionaire. I wasn't, I really wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just really determined and just really, really glued to, something that I found I love and I just focus and went all in mm-hmm. so I've started to get good at this I just put all myself in reading blogs following the right people so I believe anyone can do it like it doesn't you don't have to be uh the a star student or anything it's just no. you just have to be um I think sometimes entrepreneurs you have to be a bit in like not human because it, it when the hours that you put in and everything and it does not necessarily look human it sometimes you don't feel like a human when you're that tired mm. so it's just having that bit of a ruthless mentality sometimes to just go this is what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna put a hundred thousand percent into this and no, no one's gonna stop me yeah. and that's the only reason i've learned this stuff i've mm-hmm. done that oh, that's it committing your time to your craft and investing in yourself yeah is, yeah. is key isn't it rather than i guess it'll be a lot harder for someone trying to work a job and trying to do some other other side rather than focusing on all their energy mm. and what they're doing at the side. No, but Scott's been great to have you. Really yeah. appreciate that. Um, if people want to get in touch with you, where can they um, go and find out more about you? So that's because I'm a social media marketer. I'm on so many platforms. Right, um, yeah, fire them out. Yeah, fire them out. <laughs> we'll have yeah, them listed. Take, we'll take a sit back and relax. <laughs> and we'll read them all out. Uh, um, Twitter is at Scott Mears underscore. Um, Facebook is at Scott Mears Entrepreneur, Instagram is at Scott Mears Entrepreneur, and YouTube is at Scott Mears. Um, and if you want to just contact me through email, then you can contact me on Scott Mears at Outlook.com. You can just send me an email if you've got any questions or anything about what I've said in the podcast, or just want to reach out to maybe interested in my work, or feel like uh, you could get involved with it, please do. Uh, don't be scared to send a message, uh, even if you just want to say hi, please do. Don't. Uh, get involved it'd be great to uh, to hear from you no spot on and we'll list those as well in the comment section okay. um so make sure to to go yeah. and check scott out thanks a lot thanks, thanks for having cheers exactly. salute to you for listening to this week's podcast i hope you found it useful if you have feel free to leave us a comment uh, maybe a section that you like something that resonated with you and um, there might have been some things you didn't agree with in there as well so do let us know Feel free to hit us up on Twitter at M-I-M underscore chat, Instagram, Make It Masterminds, and shoot us an email at makeitmasterminds at gmail.com. Make It Masterminds. Yes, sir.